Hi, this is Larry Puckett. Today I want to take a look at the brand new Acura Scale Manor Class Steam Locomotive 460 wheel arrangement. These have just been delivered from China. They're brand new off the boat and they've been in production now for a couple of years. So I want to go over some of the, the features uh, on the locomotive itself. Then we'll take a look at how it operates. I'll pop open the tender and we'll look at the decoder installation, the speakers. I'll give you an idea of how you can get that coal load out and modify it as you like. And we'll also take a look at the pulling power of this locomotive. Okay, so one of the first thing you'll note is it is a beautifully painted model. It's got just a gorgeous sheen to it. It's a nice satin sheen. It's not glossy. It's not flat. It's just somewhere in between. One thing I really like here is the nice flat finish that they gave to the uh, smoke box. It really does set it off from the rest of the locomotive. Another thing, look here on the smokestack or the chimney. A beautiful little copper band. And now for those of you who aren't familiar with the GWR, the Great Western did use copper bands around the top of the chimneys or smokestacks on their steam locomotives. So that is very prototypical. Most of the models that you see that include this, it's painted on. This appears to be a piece of copper metal that has been added on here as an applique somehow, but it is very, very nicely done. Also, you can see the uh, steam dome here. We have that nice brass or bronze uh, color here on the dome. This model, Cookham Manor, represents the preserved version of this locomotive. So you'll see right here this small detail here, and there's a small pipe here. And those were additions that were added after nationalization. They, they tried to improve the draft of the chimney to improve coal burning and the like. So prior to the time that they made that modification, that would not have been there. As well as the fact that the chimney is a little different from the original version. Another thing, let's, let's zoom in a little bit closer and look at some of the uh, uh, buffer beam details. One of the details included in the package are a set of screw link coupling. You can see I've added one right here. It's fairly easy to install the coupling, but to get it to hang correctly on the little hanger hook there, that was very, very difficult. It took quite a few minutes to get that to work out. There's another one that goes on the rear that I have not installed yet because I do install KD couplings on these, and I'm afraid that anything that hangs down like the um, screw link coupling is going to interfere with that operation. Similarly, I'll show you the package here in a second of all the details, but there is another hose connection that goes on the rear of the tender that I have not installed yet for the same reason. But you can see it's a, it's a very nicely done set of details. Uh, this particular hose does come already installed on the locomotive from the factory. We do have the sprung buffers here, something that you have come to expect on most locomotives these days. Another thing I'll point out that they uh, did right here on the cylinder head and on the cylinder. In order to allow the front truck wheels to be able to negotiate uh, second radius and smaller curves, as well as uh, some fairly uh, narrow radius turnouts, they had to in make a notch into the inside of the cylinder, and the cylinder head was done the same way. However, in the package of details, they include uh, separate cylinder heads that are full diameter. So I went ahead and put those on. I'll show you the uh, ones with the cutout here in a minute. However, they do come from the factory uh, set up for second radius curves. So that's something that you can just pop off and insert the, the uh, full width versions later on as you wish. Okay, if we look at some other details here on the front of the locomotive, we do have on the front of the smoke box a very nice set of darts here, and there's an extra set of those in the uh, package. Then we have our lamp brackets here and down on the uh, pilot beam. Let's go ahead and move further back on the, on the locomotive and take a look back there. Okay, let's look uh, right here. You know, as I said, the steam dome here does have that nice uh, bronze brass uh, shine to it. And right here, the set of uh, dual whistles. These appear to be metal, but I'm not 100% sure, and I haven't been able to get in that close with the set of uh, magnifiers to be able to tell 
whether or not it is, but they look very convincing to me. Also notice the glazing on the windows. Very nicely done glazing here. So uh, another detail, we have the nameplate here. Included in the detail package are a set of etched nameplates that you can glue on later. We also have the nice lining here on the splashers, so that's another nice little detail. Here on the side of the cab, we have the number plate. Also included in the detail package is an etched brass number plate that can be glued on as well. So another nice little uh, detail that they've included in this package. Now right back here, we have this handrail here. Now a number of people have said on RMWeb that this sometimes comes just a little bit shy of the roof. So it normally should go all the way up and uh, end right at the roof line. If it's not, you can grasp that with a little pair of tweezers and just gently pull it up. And it should go right on up and make contact with the underside of the cab roof there. Plus, it can actually be taken out of here. There's a small notch where it's set into. If it pops out of there, you can just push it right back in and it should stay. You might want to add just a little touch of uh, super glue there to hold it in permanently. I'm going to turn the locomotive around so we can see the tender a little bit better. So here on the rear of the tender, we have one line uh, included already. There's a separate one included in the detail pack that you can add on if it's not going to interfere with your couplings. As I said, I use a KD number 19 coupler back here, and I'm afraid that anything I add would interfere with it. So I'm not going to add the uh, couplings that they provided. But again, we do have our sprung buffers here and our uh, lamp brackets here, here, and here, as well as up here. Notice that the water fill hatch does open here. A uh, very nice uh, cast plastic insert, coal insert here that can be removed. I'll talk about that more here in a minute. Various other details here in the tender. And you can see Looking into the cab, it is very, very nicely done. Now, it is modeled with the seat on the fireman's side up and on the engineer's side in a seating position. So I already have one Model U uh, GWR engine driver uh, in a seated position ready to be painted to add, as well as a number of firemen who are standing and working on uh, shoveling coal into the firebox. So before we go on and uh, take a look at anything else, let's take a look at the detail packet that comes with the locomotive. So right here you can see the tension lock couplers that come with the locomotive. There's this little uh, uh, additional hose connection that goes on the rear of the tender. You can see the cylinder head covers with their little quarter notch cut out so that the wheels on the lead truck can uh, negotiate uh, second radius curves and smaller. And then there's this thing here at the end of my thumb that is a uh, cylinder guard. And here we have the etched brass nameplates that will go over the second driver. And finally the etched brass number plates for the side of the cab. I will point out that they also include a headboard for the Pembroke Coast Express and then there's another one for the Cambrian Coast Express. Unfortunately, I swear I, they were in the box when I opened it. I can't find them now. So they must have uh, gotten misplaced when I was moving things around. And I'll eventually stumble across them. Okay, let's go ahead. What I want to do is uh, open up the tender, show you the decoder, show you the speakers, and go over that. Because one of the things that uh, you will find is this locomotive has a sugar cube speaker here in the, in the boiler, and it has another sugar cube speaker in the tender. So that's one reason why you get such excellent sound. So let's go ahead, open that up, and I'll share a few things that I found in there. Now, of course, one of the things that I was interested in looking at was the DCC decoder installation. So, I popped it apart. Now, on the underside here, there's a screw in each of the four corners. All you have to do is back that out, and the body will come right off. And this is, you know, the inside of the body. Pretty straightforward plastic casting. Now, as one thing I will point out, the coal load. The coal load... It is removable, however, I tell you, they did glue it in place. So a small amount of glue is placed on this end and uh, down here at this end as well. 
and I just put a, a, a number 11 X-Acto blade in here and freed it up and then that came right out. Now it is a contact type rubber cement so you can see some residue right there and it just rubs right off. You can get that off with your fingernail in case you want to install your own coal load in here or you could simply glue coal to the uh, existing plastic casting and then reinsert it. And it's held in fairly tight anyway, so I'm not sure why they bothered putting uh, the glue to it. Now let's take a look at the tender and the decoder. So right here, this is the circuit board they use. As you can see, it's got a Loke Sound uh, Next18 decoder in here. Another thing that they included uh, is a Loke Sound power pack. So it's got these two capacitors right here on the board that provide the stay alive, uh, keep alive power for the locomotive. So you're not going to be stopping and stalling going over dirty sections of track or dead frogs or bad points, anything like that. They did include that in there. Now there's a screw located right here and right here that I've taken out so we can look at the speaker arrangement. Pull that up and you can see right here there is an open slot here and a speaker here. Now they had originally planned on using two speakers in the tender, but during production they dropped it back to just one. So there's one speaker located in the tender and one located in the smoke box or on the locomotive. I'm going to put that back together and hopefully it'll still run when I get done. Right here is the connector. It's an 8-pin connector. So it's very similar to the standard 9-pin JST connector that comes with a lot of uh, standard uh, decoders these days. A little slot right here where you can make the connection if you ever take it apart. But you really don't need to. Once this is together, it really is made to be kept together and uh, serviced as a single unit. I'm going to put this back together and get it back on the road. Okay, so that was just a quick overview of the locomotive. What I want to show you now is the locomotive in operation because that really is where it shines. One of the things that I was really concerned with early on when they first mentioned using a three-pole motor was that it was going to create a lot of cogging and a very jumpy locomotive. However, that is not the case. They assured me that the uh, motor that they chose to use is a very high-efficiency motor designed for use with dental instrumentation and it has a very nice linear response curve so you get a very good response uh, to the throttle and it also has a very good skew wound armature so you don't get that cogging that you normally do get or see with some three pole motors. In addition that flywheel evens everything out a little better. Another uh, thoughtful addition that they made was this little chart and you can see that it has all of the functions listed on the left and then the individual functions what they are named. Then you have the slots, the, the programming sound slots for the Loke Sound decoder and then a, a list of the various CVs that you need to, to uh, change or edit in order to uh, increase or decrease the sounds. And then finally on the far right, they have the initial or default values for these CV settings. And I'll remind you that with CVs, they go from 0 to 255 in most cases. So for 255 would be the highest volume, 0 would be off, and 128 would be about half sound or half volume. So you can go up or down from there, but at least you have a starting point uh, given in this chart for you to work with. Okay, let's go ahead and run through the various sounds here. First, I want to go ahead and turn the sound on, which is function one. Okay, so F2 is the brake sounds. And F3, I've shown you the whistle before, but we'll do it again. F4 is a short whistle. F5 and F6 are the heavy train mode and light loco modes. So I'm going to skip past those. And let's go to F7, which is the acknowledgement whistle. So that's one short pip there. Uh, we can go with F8, which will give us coal shoveling, and I'll show you the effect of, the, of that in a minute, but listen up.
Now, one of the things, whenever you turn F8 on, the firebox flicker also comes on in the locomotive cap. You can clearly see here that the firebox flicker is not on. However, if I hit F8 on my throttle, it automatically comes on. We get the flicker and then I can turn it back off and you can see it goes right off unless, of course, it's in one of its random cycles and then it would keep running. And that's exactly what you'd expect since the fireman has to open up the door to the firebox in order to shovel coal in there. Now another thing, at various random intervals while you're running the locomotive, the coal shoveling and firebox flicker will come on by itself. So you have two options, either allowing it to function as a random feature uh, or to use it uh, by pushing F8 yourself. Okay, let's go into F9, which is the injectors. Now, one thing about F10 with the cylinder cocks, those only uh, operate when the locomotive is moving. So you don't get that sudden blowdown effect that you would normally expect with the cylinder cocks when you first turn them on in some other uh, sound packages. Now the next F11 is the buffer clash and coupling sounds. F12 is an uncoupling cycle which occurs when the locomotive is moving. We have a brake whistle at F13. Then at F14, there's a short brake whistle. F15 are the door slams. F16 is a guard whistle. F17 are the safety valves. F18 is a blower. Not very loud. And finally, F19 is a flange squeal. But you'd only hear that when the locomotive is running. There is another F20 is a fade out sound. Okay, that should give you a pretty good feeling for all of the different sounds. There is a wide variety, lots of different versions of the whistles. Okay, next I want to uh, just run the locomotive around here in the yard a bit to give you a feeling for how smooth it does operate at low speeds. So next I want to show you a little bit about the pulling power of this locomotive. Now what I have here is my 5 foot diameter helix. So it's a 30 inch radius curve in here. And the slope on this is 1.86%. Now that's rough. It could be 1.8, it could be 1.9. So it's somewhere between 1.8 and 1.9%. The important thing is it's under 2%. But it provides a very good test for the hauling power of this locomotive. And I will tell you, I've already tested it 
and I know what it can pull. And uh, right now you're going to see it hauling the Acura Scale Siphon G along with three Hornby coaches. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, so you can see at this point, it's gotten halfway up the helix, so I'm going to bring it on back down. Well, one of the great things about this hobby is it doesn't matter whether you model the Great Western Railway in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s, or if you're into the uh, modern U.S. railroading. You can really appreciate when a company like Acura Scale comes out with a model like this that is so well done. They have really gone out of their way to come up with something that is as prototypically accurate as they could put together. And it really is a beautiful combination of technology as far as the motor goes, the gearing and everything else related to how it runs, and the Loksound decoder used in this locomotive, as well as the specially designed sound package for it. They actually went out and recorded one of the preserved locomotives and came up with a customized sound project for this locomotive. So it really is a project where they've looked at every aspect of it. They worked from original Great Western Railway plans in collaboration with the historical societies and with knowledgeable individuals who were giving them feedback all along the way. And it will serve as the template for additional steam locomotive projects as they come along. So I hope to see a steady stream of steam locomotives coming out of a Cura scale just like we've seen with their diesel locomotives. That's it for today's video. Have a great week, and we'll see you here again with another video soon. Bye now.